we would direct our treatment towards the offending chemicals. For example, we would use a histamine H1 blocker to block the effects of histamine on H1 receptors. And those would be traditional antihistamines, which might be uh, Allegra, Claritin, Zyrtec, Benadryl, uh, which block that receptor. We would use a histamine H2 blocker, and popular ones there are uh, ranitidine or Zantac. Those would be the initial things that we would do. If we were having trouble controlling the patient, we would use incremental doses. We might add a leukotriene inhibitor like Singulair. Uh, but let's say we have a patient that has some of the findings. Let's say they have dermatographism, alcohol intolerance, abdominal pain, and they flush. But you measure all the things uh, that relate to mast cell disease like serum tryptase, urinary histamine, they're normal. I would then embark because I would, uh, I think there's a reasonable chance that they have a mast cell related disorder that's below the threshold of diagnosis. I would then uh, start that patient simply on an H1, H2 blocker and see how they did. If they were to tell me that they felt dramatically better, I would continue the treatment. And then we have some other histamine 1 receptor antagonists that are not available in this country. One is a drug called ketotifen. Ketotifen, in addition to being a very good histamine receptor antagonist, also has some weak ability to block mast cell release, and it also has fairly decent ability in blocking the infiltration in various organs of another cell called eosinophil, which also participates in many of the symptomatology of the patients. And finally, there are some natural molecules that belong to the class that are called flavonoids. These are uh, found in green plants, in seeds. There are about 3,000 of them, but some of them, two or three, are very good in blocking mast cells. In fact, we have a series of publications that in the laboratory, they can block mast cells 100% of anything they release. Two of those that are very similar are called quercetin and luteolin. And I'll stop with that. Quercetin is found in, um, in the pulp of grapefruit in large quantities, uh, while luteolin is very rich in olive oil and olive seed oil. There is a subset of patients in which we would do a bone marrow biopsy, and the bone marrow biopsy would not sustain the criteria for systemic mastocytosis. In addition to that, uh, there are mediators. The ones that we have available uh, would not be elevated. And so that would pose uh, a problem uh, to us in terms of what is the name that we give to those patients. So um, there are several diseases that have been associated with those symptoms. One of them is what we call idiopathic anaphylaxis. And those are the patients uh, that would have a severe uh, event where they present uh, lots of those symptoms suddenly. They would even collapse or, or almost pass out. And that would happen either periodically, once or twice a year, or more frequently. And those patients have been labeled as idiopathic anaphylaxis. And then there would be patients that would have not such severe symptoms, but the constellation of symptoms that would present chronically, almost in a daily basis or in a daily basis. And those patients would not have the classical mediators that we can find in the blood, the classical bone marrow findings. So we are at this point uh, uh, trying to identify and define what is the criteria uh, for those patients to call it as a mast cell activation, uh, either a syndrome or a mast cell activation event. And we are um, doing a lot of work, myself at the American Academy and with my colleagues uh, at all the other centers, to try to present as many uh, data and as convincing data to put a name of the, to those patients. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope you are now better able to recognize the presenting symptoms of mast cell activation. If you are a patient or a physician that has questions about a mast cell disorder, please do not hesitate to contact us or one of our physician specialists.
The Mastocytosis Society, producers of this video, is a 15-year-old nonprofit all-volunteer organization. We're dedicated to supporting patients affected by mastocytosis and mast cell activation disorders, as well as their families, caregivers, and physicians through research, education, and advocacy. If you or a family member has a mast cell disorder, please consider joining the Mastocytosis Society. Go to our website at www.tmsforacure.org for further instructions, or you can mail a check for $35 to this address. The Mastocytosis Society, care of Regina Rents Treasurer, P.O. Box 511, Plainville, Connecticut, 06062. Please consider making an extra donation to further mast cell research and education.